everyone, and welcome to Quick Pitch, presented by Degree. I'm Heidi Watney. Justin Verlander was the face of the Tigers' recent history until he accepted a trade at the very last minute of the non-waiver deadline last August 31st, a decision that he struggled with as a lifelong Tiger. Verlander was the second overall pick by Detroit in the 2004 draft and is one of the greatest pitchers in franchise history, tossing two no-hitters and winning the AL Cy Young and MVP award in 2011. Sunday, Verlander made his first start against his former team, a start he said feels different. The righty went to dinner with some of his former mates Thursday night before the series started. What would he serve up against them in the game? Yes, Aaron Boone and Terry Francona were each a big part of two of the biggest moments in the history of the Yankees-Red Sox storied rivalry. But their connection runs deeper than that. Both have baseball in their blood, literally, with Francona a second-generation big leaguer and Boone the third generation in his family to don a big league uniform. In fact, Boone's grandfather was once traded for Francona's father. That's right, Ray Boone and Bob Shaw were traded from the Tigers to the White Sox for Tito Francona and Bill Fisher back in 1958. And while we could see another Boone versus Francona matchup in the postseason, the two were at the helm Sunday in the series finale between them. Who have the Phillies and Braves ranked 1-2 in the NL East entering the All-Star break? If you raise your hand, you are lying, or I want to see your crystal ball. Because one of the biggest surprises as we enter this All-Star break is that the Braves and Phillies not only got off to strong starts, but they haven't faded. Yes, the Nationals and Mets have both underperformed and dealt with injuries, and the Braves have hit a bit of a skid, winning just two of their last ten games. But both young clubs have shown everyone that they are not going anywhere. We start Sunday with the Phillies looking to enter the break on a high note in Miami. The Oakland A's have kicked it into another gear over the past month, winning 20 of their last 26 games. Good for the best mark in all of baseball in that span. Oakland has gone from a team that might have a piece or two to trade away at the deadline to right in the mix to add and contend for a wild card spot. A big part of that has been the back end of their bullpen. Oakland is the only team that is undefeated this season when leading after seven innings, a perfect 37-0. Can they keep it going against their Bay Area rivals, the San Francisco? The rumors get louder every day. Where will Manny Machado end up? The Orioles shortstop is having another fantastic season. No surprise there. The really surprising thing is how bad the Orioles have been this year, making it a no-brainer to move the all-star player. According to the latest reports, the Orioles have narrowed their focus to a smaller group of potential dance partners. Could it be the Phillies, the Dodgers, or perhaps the Brewers? The three rumored to be favorites. And of course, the Yankees and Red Sox can't sit by without throwing their offer in the mix. As Machado plays out his last games in a Baltimore uniform, the question is simply, when will his final at-bat there be? Here's a look at the Expedia standings in the American League at the break. The Red Sox enter the Midsummer Classic with a four-and-a-half game lead over New York. They will meet ten times in the second half. And the surging A's enter the break just three games back of Seattle for that second wild card. As for the National League, the gap between first and second place in both the NL East and West is just a half game, with the Phillies and Dodgers currently atop their respective divisions. Meanwhile, seven teams are within five games of each other in the crowded NL wildcard picture. And that puts a bow on the first half of the season. Before that, we're going to leave you with the best images of the first half.